Kevin in Chapel Hill, North Carolina writes, Hi Paul, my name is Kevin and I just turned 60 years old. Good job. My hearing is still great, even better. And I hope that's a result of you paying attention. You know, sirens go by, I routinely plug my ears. I do everything I can and have for years to protect my hearing. And I hope you're doing the same. It sounds like Kevin has. I'm looking to satisfy an itch over a new two-channel system. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> I've watched videos on the importance of speaker crossover parts and how they can limit speaker potential or outright provide poor performance. Is this true? Crossover parts are also said to be a spot where manufacturers cheap out to hit a price point since consumers can't see them. If so, how can a consumer like me be expected to make informed purchasing decisions? Well, that's a multi-part question Kevin, that's really good. And yeah, all that's true. All of that is true. Manufacturers routinely cheap out with crossover parts. But not all manufacturers, okay? Some manufacturers go the uh, opposite direction, completely the opposite direction. Those manufacturers go crazy on crossover parts, while some, like, as long as it meets spec, it works, right? And that's true not only for speakers, but for electronics, for food, right? I mean, on down the line, you name it, somebody's over here with a race to the bottom to try and make it as cheap as they can and have a good appearance, while others really care and want to make it better. And I, I, I have not found anything in, in life including doctors and lawyers, that isn't the same. So I just take that as part and parcel, yeah. So you can imagine here at PS Audio, we pay a great deal of attention to the crossover because a crossover is the second most critically uh, a critical component within a loudspeaker. I would say that there are three basic components, the drivers, the crossover, and the box, okay? And in that order. The drivers are the most important, but if you take mid-range tweeter, woofer, and you don't cross them over properly, just in terms of frequency balance, it's it can go from sounding okay to orgasmic, seriously. And I watch as Chris and Darren, Paul, come on over, you gotta hear the latest iteration. It, they've just been working on the FR20. And the FR20 has some of the best drivers, the same drivers that are in the FR30. And you know, the FR30 not only gets golden ear awards, gets the cover of magazines, it's, you know, it's a spectacular loudspeaker that we're very proud of. And the reason that it's spectacular, well, there are many, but mostly it's that the quality of those drivers and how they're implemented, which is the crossover. Okay, so now they're doing the FR20, exact same drivers, and they are beating their hearts out with the crossover. Little bit change here makes a huge sonic difference. And once they get those balances in order and figure out that crossover, which is so critical, then it gets down to quality of parts. What kind of, like here, here, I'll show you. I pulled this out just for you. So <laughs> this is sloppy as could be. I just pulled it out of a bin. This is just some, we call them mules. This is just a mule board that, that Chris had no doubt been trying something on. But even here, this is a very expensive film cap, as is this. I mean, these are, Oh, I can't even see what they are. Uh, boy, these are uh, made in Germany. They're Audine. I haven't even heard of these. Janssen, I've certainly heard of that. Very decent cap. But uh, here's a rail cap. It makes a huge difference in the kind of capacitors that you use, the kind of coils that you use. Like, here's an air core coil. Now, in some instances, that's exactly the right thing to use. But in other instances, you want a much more expensive iron core coil. And oh, 
these are expensive. These are, I mean, it's heavy, it's expensive. If you do this properly, it's expensive. And so, yeah, depending on the company, will tell you what you're gonna get. So the only advice I've ever been able to give to people, look at the company. Are they in a race to the bottom? Are they trying to be competitive on pricing? Is that their whole shtick? I mean, read their marketing material. Greatest value, highest, you know, this or that. And they'll all say that, you know, they've got engineers in white coats and they've got, you know, they're, they're working for you, buddy. Yep, but take a look and see what it is they are actually presenting to you. Is it just a good looking box with some cheap crap inside? Well, there's plenty of companies out doing that. More of them than they are of us who actually spend the time to make something of value, something we're proud of, and racing to the top rather than the bottom. Hope that helps. Thanks and good luck on your journey.